The other day, I was out testing a brand new light with a buddy when something crazy happened. You're listening to the Master Your Lens Podcast, episode 177. Hey, John Lee Dumas here, the founder and host of EO Fire, and welcome to the Master Your Lens Podcast, the photography podcast dedicated to sharing inspiring stories, technical tips, and powerful secrets to help you become a better photographer. And now, your host, Matthew Jordan Smith. Hello, Photography Nation. How are you doing today? I'm just back from Kyotography 2020. If you're not familiar with that photo festival, I've got to tell you, it is absolutely fantastic. It normally takes place toward the beginning of the year, around March. But like everything else this year, it was pushed back quite a bit. So the festival just took place and even though I was in Kyoto recently, I went back for Kyotography 2020. And I'm glad I did. I spent four days seeing as many exhibits as I could, and each and every one of them were absolutely amazing. What was different this year is there were no crowds. Unless you live in Japan, you can't really travel to Japan. And for that reason, there were no crowds which I must say is really odd for Kyoto because normally it's packed with tourists. That's good and bad. Bad because, number one, it hits the economy really hard. But good because if you're going around to see things, it's much easier for you to get around. And this year, it was really pleasant to walk around Kyoto and go from exhibit to exhibit in a very easy fashion. I really enjoyed it. A great show. And hopefully next year you'll be able to travel and come and see the show. They've already announced it. It's going to take place again in September of 2021, which I think is a good deal because weather wise, it's fantastic to be in Kyoto during this time of year. The summer heat is over, but it's not winter yet. So you have the best of everything. Great weather, a great city, and amazing photography. What can be better than that? My only complaint is that my feet were worn out from walking all over the place. <laughs> but even that's good. I had a great time, saw a lot of amazing shows. And one thing I love about Kyotography is that none of the shows are in traditional galleries. They're scattered throughout the city in usually amazing locations. And that makes the work stand out even more. Some of the exhibits are in these beautiful shrines and temples. Others may be in a warehouse. No matter where you go to see the exhibits, they are always really special. This year, I spent four days going to see all the shows and I needed four full days to see everything I could. The show never disappoints. And I always come back feeling inspired. Wherever you are in the world, try to see an exhibit. We're going into fall, fall winter season. And as you probably know, the worldwide pandemic seems to be getting worse again. That means for many people, we won't be able to get around the way we want to. But something interesting is happening. A lot of places are pivoting and taking their work online. So even if you have to be locked down, stay at home, maybe you can still see things online. So look for events that are online. Look for shows that are taking place online and get in there and see new work. No matter what's going on around us. And yes, there's a lot going on right now. You need to be inspired with something beautiful, something that makes you feel good, even when there's craziness all around us. Before we go into today's topic, I want to urge you all to please go out and vote. It is your right and you have a responsibility to vote. So if you are in America this November, get out there and vote. For many places, we're voting already. 
I live in Japan, but I cast my vote over a month ago. If you are in America, early voting is now taking place. So go out there and vote. Exercise your right. Because nothing's going to change until you do. Today, we're talking about your photography style. But before we dive into that, I want to share something crazy that happened the other night. A buddy of mine called me and said he had a brand new light. And he's been playing around with it. But he needed to do a little more testing. He wanted to show me what this light could do. So we got together and went out at night with a new light that looks very similar to a Star Wars lightsaber. This light is a constant light source, meaning it won't flash the way your, your strobe light does or your speed light. It doesn't flash, it's a constant light source. But it's a very cool constant light. It has the ability to change colors and move through colors based on how you program the light. This light is called the Nanlite Pavo Tube. And it's around 400 bucks. So we head out. Tripod, cameras, and new light. We weren't testing the light on a person. We decided we'd shoot an object. So we went into a temple. For the most part, the temples and shrines are very quiet at night. It's dark, there's nobody there, and you can make beautiful pictures. So we found a statue of a Buddha and decided to do our test there. The idea was to do light trails. For light trails, you're doing long exposures, five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and they can be a lot of fun. So that's what we did. We did a series of images with a Nan light Pavo tube and played around with time, played around with color, and played around with movement to get different effects. We were having a great time. It had just rained, so the reflection of the light on the ground was amazing. All these beautiful colors enhanced by a wet surface. Absolutely stunning. Whenever we're testing lights, it can take hours, but the time goes by so fast because we're in our element, taking pictures, exploring new ways of creating beautiful images, and we're having fun. But I want you to think about this. We're basically in a dark park, a temple, a shrine. It's nighttime. There's no one else around. And here are two guys with cameras, tripods, and a light playing around with colors. Well, out of the blue, somebody else walks into the shrine, sees us taking pictures in a very odd way, and comes up to us and says, do you speak English? We turn and there's this young, attractive woman wanting to know what we were up to. So we begin talking about photography. Turns out she's also in the field. And from a distance, she saw these beautiful colors and was wondering what in the world is going on. As she got closer, she saw one of us playing around the light, doing these weird movements while the other took pictures. And her curiosity brought her into the shrine. The three of us ended up talking for quite a while. And at the end, we said our goodbyes and went back to taking pictures. As the night began to get cooler, we decided to call it a night. Now, as we were walking out of the shrine, something occurred to me. What had just happened would never happen in America. Maybe it would never happen anywhere else in the world, period. Imagine it's nighttime. There's two guys in a park. Do you think a woman would walk up and start a conversation? Probably not. But this is Japan, and it's a different world. And I thought about that, and I said, you know what? Every place should be like this. I know it's not, but it should be. And for that reason, I want you to think about your vote and get out there and vote so the world can be what it should be. Okay, now let's get into the style part of this story. The next day, my buddy sent me his pictures. When it comes to making light trails, they can be beautiful. And when you have a light that has the ability to change colors and change the length of time you have each color, that can make some very interesting light trails. Now, for those who may not know, a light trail is when you're taking a long exposure and doing that long exposure, 
you use a light of some type, move around your frame to create light trails. This works best at night, by the way, with any type of constant light, even a flashlight. But there are other types of lights that can create other types of effects, like the Nanlite Pavo light. It's a great light. The next day, my buddy sends me his pictures, and they are beautiful. I really admired the work, and I showed it to my wife. And she said, oh, those are nice, but that's not your style. And she was right. While those pictures were beautiful, they definitely were not my style of photography. Very often we see something that looks very, very cool. This is very common in the world of photography. You see an image that you love and you want to learn how it's done. There's nothing wrong with that. However, it may not fit into your style of photography. Today, a lot of photographers are searching for their style. And in that search, they may be trying everything. There's nothing wrong with trying everything. But you've got to find out what you identify with. What makes you not only feel good when you see the work, but what really has a connection to you. It was great watching my buddy create his images. But those images are definitely his style not mine. It may be hard for you to identify what your style is, but let me give you a little bit of help. When you are in your zone, creating images that feel like you, you'll know it by the way you feel. When you like something, it feels a certain way. I liked what my buddy was doing, but I didn't love it. That's one sign right away. It can be a beautiful picture, and these pictures are beautiful pictures, but they don't resonate with me. The same thing is true for you. There are pictures that you're going to love. You may admire them greatly, but they're not you. When it comes to finding your style, your style is already part of you and you know it by how you feel. When I'm creating images that are uniquely me, I feel it and so do you. Whenever we feel good, there's no light going off that says, oh, I'm feeling good. You just feel good. Same when you don't feel good. When something happens that irritates you, you know that feeling. You don't need somebody to tell you that you're irritated. You just feel it. Feelings are powerful. They tell us everything. This year, we've had people telling us a lot of different things. And you can feel when they're true or not true. I'm always put off when we need to prove when something is right or wrong. We don't need to prove that. You know it in your heart. You can feel it. When something is right, you feel it. When something is wrong, you feel that too. The same can be true with your style of photography. You feel it when it's right. When you are creating your images that feel right to you, you're going to know it. You'll know it when you're shooting and you'll know it when you are culling your images, making your selections. The feeling comes back. That's the connection. But you've got to be aware of it. There are people who love taking pictures of weddings. And there are people who despise it. When you don't like something, you can't fake that. It shows. And others, well, they feel that too. You don't have to find your style. Your style finds you and it tells you, oh, this is your style by how you feel. So let me ask you, when was the last time you were taking pictures and you felt amazing? Go back and look at those pictures. What was it about that experience that made you feel a certain way? Now think back to pictures you made when you didn't feel it. Maybe those pictures look beautiful, but it doesn't feel good to you. Maybe people around you love those pictures, but you don't. That too is a sign. Your style is a part of you the same way your DNA is a part of you. Your style of photography is unique to you. It's not just about a technique or a lens or even a certain light. It's about you. We've all heard that thing, shoot what you love. 
Love feels a certain way. It's much stronger than like. You can like a lot of different things, but what you like may not be your style. Your style is hidden in what you love. So go out there and identify with what you love and get to work making your style. All right, Photography Nation, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Master Your Lens podcast. There's a lot going on in the world. Things that may not make you feel good. You know what that feels like. Now identify the things that make you feel good and turn your energy in that direction. Until next week, always dream big. Bye for now.